breaking news from New York's probe into Donald Trump's finances. Today, the former Florida blogger suing New York Attorney General Letitia James over her inquiry into his business practices in the suit. Filed in federal court in Albany, Trump argues, her mission is guided solely by political animus and a desire to harass, intimidate, and retaliate against a private citizen who she views as a political opponent. At least Trump's lawsuits admit he isn't president. But James fired back, saying the Trump organization has continually sought to delay our investigation into its business dealings. To be clear, neither Mr. Trump nor the Trump organization get to dictate if and where they will answer for their actions. Our investigation will continue undeterred because no one is above the law, not even someone with the name Trump. Trump is accused of inflating the value of his assets in order to secure more favorable loans. And James has made it clear that being rich and once powerful will not deter her investigations. In this state, we have a set of laws that every individual and entity must be held accountable to. Regardless of who you are, regardless of your power, size, influence, wealth, or station in life one set of laws. And today, we send a strong and loud message that no one is above the law. Joining me now, David K. Johnson, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative journalist and lecturer at Syracuse University Law School and author of The Big Cheat, How Donald Trump Fleeced America. Back with us is Neil Katyal. David, is Trump ultimately trying to get this before the Supreme Court? Is that what's going on here? Well, he may be. Uh, he's trying generally to delay, 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 which is what Roy Cohn taught him to do. Unfortunately, this lawsuit doesn't really raise the best argument he has against Letitia James, which is that she's conducting a civil investigation and cooperating with the Manhattan District Attorney's criminal investigation. And the lawyer who drafted this just glancingly mentions this instead of focusing on bootstrapping civil into criminal. Interesting. Neil, what's the likelihood of success in this suit, you think? Uh, if there were a negative percentage, I would offer that, but it would be zero percent if there's not a negative percentage. I mean, you know, there is a doctrine in our law, and it's one of the most foundational doctrines called Younger versus Harris is the Supreme Court case. And it says basically you can't stop you can't just file a lawsuit because you're worried that an investigation might come out against you or even deprive someone of their rights. The remedy, the Supreme Court says, is to raise that in the context in the investigation, not to run into another federal court and try and stop it. And so Trump is complaining here, like every other target of an investigation, civil or criminal, and our legal system undoubtedly says you can't do that. And so at this point, I got to wonder about Donald Trump's psychology. I mean, this is a guy who supposedly say, hates losing, but he keeps coming back to the table after every failed bluff, totally convinced he's going to win the next one. Um, you know, it's just nuts to me. I'm sure, however, his legal team is crying all the way to the bank as they charge him legal fees for all of these, you know, silly filings that they're filing on his behalf. Both his legal team and whoever it is that writes his fundraising emails. David, there's also the issue of Trump's deposition next month in Letitia James's civil investigation. James has requested to take his testimony on January 7th. That is soon. Is it possible that this will be delayed or canceled due to this suit from Trump? Well, I think Letitia James' office will have to fight to get Donald to come and testify, particularly because I, at some point you're going to see the lawyer raise the bootstrapping argument. Uh, and by the way, Neil hit on a very important point here, and that is Donald is reduced now to lawyers who are not well known, but who certainly know how to channel in their pleadings his emotional fury at things going against him. The, the, the lawsuit itself just reeks of this emotional rather than legal arguments. And that's how Donald works. And it's not going to work with any judge. I was going to say it's how he works. It is not how the law works. Neil, I want you to take a listen to what Michael Cohen testified in 2019 about this exact investigation. Take a listen. It was my experience that Mr. Trump inflated his total assets when it served his purposes and deflated his assets to reduce his real estate taxes. You know, we all remember that moment. Could Cohen be brought in to testify against Trump again? A hundred percent. And let me just say how extraordinary it is to have Donald Trump's former lawyer testifying in Congress under oath and saying Trump inflated his assets and basically committed federal and state crimes. That's a remarkable 
remarkable thing. And, you know, what this investigation is in New York is to try and figure out, is Michael Cohen telling the truth and other folks, are they, if they are not? That's going to play out. Trump has filed this lawsuit today. I don't think this thing goes anywhere. I think if James wanted to, she can conduct that deposition on the 7th. She'll get permission from the courts to do so and expedite their consideration of this bogus Trump lawsuit today. And I think everything can move forward. David, you touched on this earlier, but I want to put a finer point on it. James's investigation is a civil case. Why is Trump fighting so hard? And then could it turn criminal? Well, there is the criminal investigation she's cooperating with by the Manhattan District Attorney, as well as other investigations that may well turn criminal. But uh, Donald needs to stop this because it's going to go right to the heart of his frauds, where he overstated by huge amounts the value of properties. Lots of people object to the property value put on their house. I did over the house I'm sitting in right now, over $30,000. But you can't take a property worth $1.3 million for property taxes, in your view, and then say under oath in another form it's worth $50 million. That's fraud on its face. Now, one of the big things hanging over this whole case is outgoing New York District Attorney Cyrus Vance. Mr. Vance leaves office at the end of the year and has not yet signaled whether his investigation will be handed over to his, to his successor. How would this affect the AG's investigation, you think? I don't think it affects it at all. I suspect that investigation will continue. Um, and law enforcement officials, they're pros. They take it where the evidence leads them. And I know the Manhattan DA's office will do exactly that. So I don't think the shift in one district attorney to another matters. I don't think this lawsuit today matters in any way, shape, or form. I think things continue to go on and the investigation continues. And the possibility of criminal indictments is now looming over Donald Trump.